Hello, and welcome to Eyes on Success, a weekly program covering a wide variety of topics of interest to people with vision loss. I'm Nancy Goodman Torpy. And I'm Pete Torpy. When I walked in the door, they figured they could hire me cheap, and they were right. I agreed to go to work for a a song and a dance, and because I just wanted to get started. My dad had encouraged me. He said, go to work for this small company. They're doing computers. You never know what will happen. And that is how the long and illustrious career of today's guest was launched. We'll be speaking with Eric Damery, who is currently Vice President of Software Product Management of Freedom Scientific of Espero Company, which is a worldwide leader in providing assistive technology for visually impaired people. We know we were interested in learning more about his career path, and we assume you will be too. But first, for our tip of the week. This week's tip comes from Eric Damery and represents one of Pete's wishes come true. If I had to pick a tip to share with consumers right now, I think I would lean towards something that just rolled out in the most recent update of the Jaws Infusion 2021 product. In these days of having to interact on Zoom for meetings, or teams or whatever it is that you might be using to communicate with other folks, one of the things that we've desperately needed in the screen reader was the ability to quiet the screen reader down so you could navigate while you're listening to the meeting. If they're both speaking at the same volume, it makes it very difficult to be navigating with JAWS and listening to someone else talk. You know, you could do this before if you went in through the control panel and the audio devices and find it and adjust it, but that wasn't very convenient. So we added a new feature in, and if you're running the latest release, you can get to it right now and try it out. You hold down the JAWS key, insert key, hit the space bar, and then uh, you'll hear the little layered mode sound, and then you hit the letter V for volume, and then you hit the letter J for JAWS. And at that point, you can use the arrow keys or page up and page down to adjust your JAWS volume without interfering with the system volume. So you can still listen to the meeting and quiet JAWS down. And uh, this is a great feature. And I think uh, lots of folks that are using Zoom today or listening to these podcasts or editing audio, you'll love that feature. And I've already taken advantage of that. I was all set to put in a suggestion to Freedom Scientific to say, hey, can there be an easy way of adjusting JAWS volume (laughs) relative to other applications? And then all of a sudden, it came out. So Eric mentioned that that's one example of using layered keystrokes in JAWS. And later on in this program, Pete will give a demonstration of how to get the most effectiveness out of using layered keystrokes. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Let's start by meeting Eric and learning about his company, Freedom Scientific, a subsidiary of Vispero. Eric, you've been with us on the show in the past, but for people who may not know you, can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm uh, Eric Amory, and uh, I joined into this industry in 1994. I've served as the vice president of uh, software product management for Freedom Scientific, reaching back to when we were formed in 2000 and prior to that with Henter Joyce. And I served in several roles, business development, sales, and uh, just all around bottle washer back in the beginning. <laughs> You've done it all. I've been around I've for done, a long time. Yeah. I am I always tell people I'm the old guy in the company, but I'm not the oldest guy in the company. <laughs> <laughs> These days you're calling yourself Vispero, and that's a lot larger umbrella than many people may realize. Can you give us a quick overview of what Vispero contains these days? Sure. Well, maybe it it helps if we go back to the beginning. Back in the 1990s, 
really before there was any um, money outside the industry that had come in, there were lots of small companies, Henter Joyce being one of them who I worked for, uh, Ted and Mel Henter started that company with Bill Joyce back in the late eighties. And um, some of the other smaller companies, Blazy Engineering and um, Arkin Stone, who were the makers of Open Book and Win, And um, somewhere in the late 90s, some venture capital money came along and decided to want to try and roll some of these companies up. And it was Freedom Scientific that got formed in 2000. And that was an acquisition of Henter Joyce and Blazy Engineering put together. And then they acquired Open Book and Win from Arkenstone. Arkenstone was a nonprofit organization. So we just acquired those products from them. I just interject at this point that a couple of years ago, we did a pair of shows in which we got together the founders of those three companies. So Ted Henter, Dean Blasey, and Jim Fruchterman. And we got the three of them talking together. And that was just so much fun and so interesting. Yeah. For those folks that have been around and been customers long enough to remember those guys, they were the pioneers really in a lot of the technology here uh, with hardware and software and some of the stuff Jim Fruchterman did was just unbelievable as well. And, and so Freedom Scientific had gotten formed and then we switched over to a couple of different venture capital companies along the way. But back in uh, 2016, I think it was, another venture capital company acquired Freedom Scientific and then Enhanced Vision and Optelec, Optelec first and then Enhanced Vision afterwards. And also we picked up AI Squared along the way, the makers of Zoom Text. And we really put all of these companies together under the Vespero umbrella. So we, we've really kept the company names of Freedom Scientific, Optelec and Enhanced Vision. We have three distinct brands and everything is under the Vespero umbrella. And today there's over 400 employees within these three different organizations. We have employees scattered around the world. Quite impressive. And even mm -hmm. before it became, shall we say, trendy in 2020, you've had a number of um, people with special skills working remotely anyway. Yes, that was um, true from the beginning. Um, you guys know Glenn Gordon well, who yes. came into Henter Joyce um, the same year that I did. And Glenn was actually a customer of Ted Henter's for a number of years. And uh, he came on board. Ted was having, you know, some change in personnel and needed to get uh, somebody on board to lead the Jaws for Windows effort. And Glenn decided that he didn't want to be blocked out of using Windows computers in the future. So figured this is a good time to join. So as a screen reader user, he came on board and became the architect really for the, for the Windows product. I have to give Glenn Gordon a lot of credit. How Pete and Glenn met was Pete was a JAWS user and Pete's pretty good with a computer, and he can wrestle most computers to the ground and force them to do what he wants. But every once in a while, he'd run into a problem with JAWS, and he'd submit it as a problem to the team. And, of course, none of them were easy problems, and they'd all get elevated to Glenn. And instead of getting annoyed because this guy kept submitting difficult problems, he finally called up one day, and he said, Okay, Pete, let's talk about this. And that's how they became friends. Yep. And that's exactly, you know, Glenn's done that with lots of users over the years. He's, he likes to pick up the phone and call people and, and get into the conversations and then talking with users, you know, Glenn has a, a place in his heart for people who use this technology. And, and, you know, we do this because we want to see it succeed for folks. And it makes all the difference in the world to yep. the end users. 
Eyes on Success is made possible in part by our corporate partners. Underwriting pairs the impact of targeted marketing with the integrity of community goodwill. Learn more by sending an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. This week's focus topic is actually part one of a two-part series where we talk with Eric Damery about his path through the field of access technology. You mentioned in the introduction, Glenn Gordon, and of course, he's totally blind. But when I think of the name Eric Damery, what comes to mind is a person who is very experienced and facile with screen readers developed primarily for the blind, but is you are actually fully sighted and not visually impaired at all. So we right. wanted to talk today a little bit about how you came to that position. And if we hop into our time machine, how far do we have to go back to start that story? <laughs> well, I never heard of the term screen reader until 1993. That was the year that I heard of what one was. But what led me to find out and what led me into this industry um, was that I grew up in a family with a visually impaired member. My dad was a blinded veteran from the Korean War days. And uh, so I grew up in a household around someone who needed to keep track of where they put things and, you know, make sure the scissors aren't left on the counter. And, and you know, since my dad was a sighted person growing up, he had worked on automobiles and he did all of these, you know, mechanical things. He was, he was very mechanically inclined. So when he lost his vision, uh, and, and it was kind of gradual from his 20s till he wasn't totally blind until in his 50s but he didn't have enough vision to drive and he, he really couldn't read other than with a very small pocket magnifier he would pull out and get right on top of paper. So he really couldn't read and write well, but he knew how to do things. And so I never thought of him as someone who was, you know, impaired in any way. He, you know, he couldn't drive a car, but he still came to the baseball game when I was a kid growing up. And he made sure he sat behind the screen because he couldn't see if the ball was coming at him. But, you know, I didn't feel like I lived with somebody who had an impairment at all. Yes, he was uh, he, just he, differently he, abled. That's right. And I learned how to work around that. And I, you know, I think you just learn some things that you don't realize you're learning them because you're around somebody who's visually impaired. But, you know, it was, it was back then in 1993 when he was, they had retired and, and I moved them to Florida around 1986. And it was my first time in Florida in 1986. And I kind of made up my mind right then that this was a great place to be. And why would I want to wait until, uh, till I retire to get here? I was living in <laughs> Massachusetts. It was terrible cold. I was not a big fan of the cold weather. So in 1989, I was in a transition position with a company that that got bought and was moving and I made the move at that point to Florida to start over again so I came to Florida in 89 finished up some school and uh, had gone to work for a small software company that did report writing software here in Clearwater and then that job kind of came to an end and I was looking for something to do and it was then that my dad called up and said, hey, there's a company coming by with some new technology that I'm going to try through the VA. Why don't you come down? And he thought I was a computer wizard. Well, I didn't know anything about computers. I sold software, but I didn't really have a computer and didn't know how to use them at that time. Oh, geez. So your so, background was in marketing and sales then? Yes. And uh, I worked for a computer company and we did testing of, you know, mini computers, uh, SCSI drives and things like that. So I did a lot of hardware testing, but didn't own a personal computer. And so when I saw my dad was getting one of the Arkenstone computers from Arkenstone with open book software on it, and Ted Henter's company, Henter Joyce, was the Florida rep for Arkenstone. So their salesperson brought the computer to my dad's place and I happened to go there that day and, uh, 
and saw how it worked and got the book and it was very simple and I was so impressed with the fact that my dad could now read the mail without having to have a battle with my mother at the kitchen table reading the mail every week. That was a miracle so, back then to have a device It like was that. a miracle. So I was so impressed and I was like, I was looking for something interesting to do and I thought, this, is, this looks like it'd be great. And uh, I got on the phone with Arkenstone because I figured I'm not going to call Ted. I'm going to call this Arkenstone company. I don't want to mess around here in St. Pete. <laughs> I want to go big school. So I called Arkenstone and they had a sales person and I talked to her and she said, listen, you need to call Ted Henner because uh, you got to get your feet wet before you can do this stuff. And he's the place to start. So I said, okay. And uh, that's when I went and I met Ted and his wife and uh, Ted had just fired his salesperson who was the person that delivered my dad's computer because he didn't really like salespeople. Oh, geez. But uh, <laughs> Ted had a, a general manager that had just started with the company, a fellow named Jerry Bowman. He met Ted because they were on the board of the Florida Abilities Organization. And Jerry used to give Ted a ride back and forth. And Ted told Jerry that, you know, he had a small company and he really needed some help and he didn't have any HR people. And Jerry kind of, I think, felt sorry for him and came in and said, I'll do some HR work for you. So Jerry convinced Ted he's got to hire a sales guy. And when I walked in the door, they figured they could hire me cheap and they were right. I agreed to go to work for a, a song and a dance. And because I just wanted to get started. My dad had encouraged me. He said, go to work for this small company. They're doing computers. You never know what will happen. So this was the beginning of Henter Joyce. Ted was still a salesman for Arkenstone, but was just starting his new well, company? Well, he had Henter Joyce. They had Jaws for DOS. They sold Blazy products. They sold Arkenstone products. They sold Braille printers. He did a little bit of everything. Oh, interesting. So when they hired me, we, we sold AI Squared's products too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he hired me, my job was to be the Florida rep to sell systems. And I would connect with consumers or organizations around the state and people wanted to see what the Arkenstone product could do. And I'd say, well, listen, if you can put together a group of people, I'll come over and show it to you and them at the same time. And I used to go to different people's houses and they'd have all their friends from their local NFB chapters or whatever. They'd invite everybody to the house and I'd come over and I'd pull out the Arkenstone computer and answer questions and show them how it worked and then start taking orders. Reminds me of the old and, Tupperware uh, parties. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. I was doing, I was doing Arkenstone Tupperware parties, you know, and, uh, and then I'd come back through the next month and deliver systems to these different people that, you know, process orders either through the VA or the local blind services office or, or purchased them themselves. And, and I would go to people's homes and set up these systems and show them how to get started with it. And uh, I really enjoyed that. But it wasn't too long after that, that Ted pulled me aside and he said, listen, this is great, but he didn't get in this to be a dealer for everybody else. He got in this to make JAWS. And he said, we really want to focus in on the JAWS product. And I said, uh, okay. And I started working with the dealers uh, around the country. And I decided if I was going to really understand and sell JAWS and be able to explain it to people, I better learn how to use it. Well, you know, like you, I am also fully sighted. All I know about how to work JAWS is if you hit insert F4, it stops. But you actually learned how to work with a screen reader as a sighted person. It was hard as a sighted person to be able to figure out a screen reader when you're doing your job. So what I would do is at night, I would take the tower computer. We didn't have laptops then. I had a tower computer. I'd unplug it all and I'd take the computer and the mouse and the keyboard and the power cord back to my house. And I had to take the mouse because you couldn't run the computers back then unless you plugged a mouse in, even though you weren't using it. Mm -hmm. But I'd leave the monitor at the office and I'd just take the computer, the mouse and the keyboard and the power cord, and I'd go home and I'd spend a couple of three hours at night starting to figure out the experience of using a computer without seeing it. 
And that's how you became a user. And that's how I became a user. So I, and I literally learned Windows from a keyboard with a screen reader. So this is probably the right time for you to explain what JAWS is an acronym for. Sure, Job Access with Speech. You know, but, as you uh, say, though, it's hard to learn a screen reader if you still have access to a screen that you can use and see because it's such a crutch. When something doesn't work out or you get a little frustrated, you just peer at the screen. And that way right. you never learn the screen reader. But you managed to do that, which is why you become one of the cited people who's a real expert with a screen yes, reader. And, and I've tried to explain that to lots of people over time that you, you will never learn it if you, see, if you can see it. I mean, as a sighted user, you have the benefit of knowing what it all looks like, but you have to kind of, as a visually impaired person, and you know this, Pete, that you kind of, you know, you learn your way around. So it's like when you get up at night to go to the bathroom and it's dark, as a sighted person, I don't have to turn the lights on. I know how many steps it is to get here. You just kind of learn that. You yes, map your you way. because you have to, yes, of course. Exactly. And so when I, I can sit down at a computer today with no screen and no screen reader, and I could still do something. I could log in, I could get Outlook running, and I could even send an email message to somebody without ever seeing it or listening to it because I just know the keystrokes. I know how to get there. I know exactly what that takes. You know, I think that's what made a big difference for me in the early days when Xerox had changed from using DOS to Windows 3.1. And there were a variety of screen readers available. And people said, how's Pete going to use a computer? And I must have tried three or four of them, and they were just terrible. I just couldn't work with them. I was just about to give up when I tried JAWS, and it worked. And I was able to do all of what I needed to do in Windows. And I figured out the reason why was it was a blind person who developed it. They had to make it work. That's exactly right. And that is very, very significant in the success of the technology. Um, you know, I kind of filled the role of product manager back then, but even today, I mean, I don't, I don't kid myself. I am not the brains behind figuring out what we should do. I try and pull that information out of users and we have so many good users. I mean, so it was customers out there and there's a lot of them, um, thousands of people that I've had an opportunity and the pleasure to meet and work with over the years. And now here's Pete with the promised demonstration of how to use layered keystrokes in JAWS to enable you to have access to many more keystroke commands. Basically, there are just so many keys on the keyboard and you quickly run out of hotkeys that you want to assign to special functions. And this is a way of extending the number of hotkeys that can be used. You get into the layered commands by hitting JAWS key plus space, like Eric said. Space. And now you have a whole lot of extra hotkeys that are available to you. To find out which ones, hit the question mark and you'll come up with a help text describing many of the layered commands. Heading level two web browsers, the following commands are available in browsers. So this brings up a bunch of headings. The first heading is a list of layered commands that are available for use in browsers. I'll hit the H to go to the next heading. General commands, heading level two. These are general commands that can be used. Editors, email, and word processors, heading level two. These are some more hotkeys for editors and email, etc. Messaging applications, heading level two. These are some hotkeys that are available for messaging applications like Skype. Secondary layers, heading level two. And there's some even deeper layers with some more functionality. Now I can just hit escape to get out of the layered command or out of this help topic. Escape. So several of the functions in here that I often use are things like performing OCR on the PC screen or on documents. There are layers for dealing with Skype calls and answering calls and looking at chat messages in Skype. There are layers for reviewing what JAWS said. But one of the features I really like, we talked about the number of hotkeys that are available and really who can remember all of those hotkeys? There are a ton of them. So one of the things I like to do is to get into the JAWS layered command to search for these hotkeys. And 
You can do that by hitting JAWS key plus space again. Space. So I'm in the layered command. And then if I hit J. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search for colon edit. And it brings up a search field where I can search for JAWS command. So let's say that I wanted to search for how to navigate through headings on a web page. So let's type heading. Heading. Move to next heading. H. H heading level three link. Now I hit tab and there's a bunch of headings here. And the first one says move to next heading. Hit H. Well, I happen to know that one, but let's hit H again. Move to prior heading. Shift plus H. Dots one dash two dash five dash seven heading level three link. So this tells me how I can move to the previous heading, both by hitting shift plus H on a keyboard or how to do it on a braille display. If I arrow down underneath this heading, it gives me a more detailed description of how this function works and what it does. Move to the prior heading on the HTML page. Link control plus JAWS key plus shift plus enter. And there's a link if you want to perform that function right there. Let's go to the next heading by hitting H. Move the next heading at level three, three. Dots two dash five heading level three link. So now I can move to headings at specific levels. So this feature can be very useful to help you search for and remember hotkeys that you might have forgotten, or just to see if there is a hotkey to perform a certain function. So the JAWS layered command can be very helpful. Again, if you need help with that, JAWS key plus space followed by H brings up a virtual viewer with help on the various keys and how they can be used. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Now for this week's final item, how to learn more about Fispero and Freedom Scientific and their products and how to contact Eric Damery directly. So you can reach Freedom Scientific or Vispero. You can use either one of them, freedomscientific.com or Vispero, V-I-S-P-E-R-O.com and get to our web pages. Um, you can write to me directly, E Damery, E-D-A-M-E-R-Y at Vispero.com. And uh, we look forward to talking with you folks again. Is there a phone number people can use? Oh, yes. In the United States, you can use an 800 number, 800-444-4443, or from anywhere else, 727-803-8000. And do you have a social media presence? We are on social media. If you go into Facebook, you can just search for Freedom Scientific. And on Twitter, it's at Freedom Sci, S-C-I. And you can find all of that contact information in the show notes associated with this episode at www.eyesonsuccess.net. That's it for show number 2104. Next week on Eyes on Success, we will continue the conversation with Eric Damery, talking more about the evolution of access technology and his personal involvement in that evolution. So join us next week as we continue that conversation. You've been listening to Eyes on Success, hosted and produced by Nancy Goodman Torpy and Peter Torpy, and distributed by WXXI Reach Out Radio. You can access the full archive of previous shows, subscribe to the podcast, and much more by going to our website, www.eyesonsuccess.net. If you have questions about anything you've heard on the show or have suggestions for future shows, send an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.